What has happened in the past usually changes the odds or affects the odds of what can happen going forward. On September 10th, which is the full day that you see to the left of the overnight trade, the market opened higher and traded off for most of the session. What you will notice is that the low on the 10th was a poor low. A poor low simply means there was no excess on the low. Excess marks the end of one auction and the beginning of another auction. So with having no extra excess down there, that decreases the odds that that auction has been completed. Additionally, you will see the 10th had a very prominent point of control. Very prominent points of control are like magnets and very often price will return to that level. Each night we do a recap and preparation report for the following session. The recap report that we did on the 10th for trading on 9-11 contained three scenarios. The second scenario, which was the scenario that I thought had the highest odds for today, said, following Monday's brief consolidation, the market continues lower. I give this scenario higher odds for the following reasons. Monday's low is poor, and the market was able, unable to substantially lift itself above the prior all-time high set on January 26 at 2875.25. So that's the reason that that was my highest scenario. All right, let's go back and look at the market. One of the concepts that we talk about quite often, and quite frankly, it is probably the most difficult concept we talk about for people to internalize. That concept is letting the trade come to you. Too often, traders are overly anxious to get involved in a trade. So they are constantly looking for a trade. And my statement is, you don't want to look for a trade. Most traders will respond, of course I do. That's what I do, I'm looking for a trade. My response to that is, no. After you get experience, you will recognize the trade when it comes, and it will come to you without actively looking for it. On the night of the 10th, the market rallied in the overnight market to the 2885 level. Now remember, my second scenario was that we would trade below the low of the 10th because of the uh, poor low. And also, if we opened, you know, too far above that very prominent point of control, that's like a magnet, we get pulled back to it. And also the market hadn't lifted very much above the prior all-time high, set in January 26th of 2018. We were only a couple of handles above it. So overnight, when the market traded to the 2885 level, and that was early in the evening before I went to bed, I elected to put on some 2875 puts. Those are puts that expire at the end of the week. And this is uh, Monday night that those were, um, that position was established. The reason for that is I thought there was a good chance that the market would go down and take out the low from Monday. When the market rallied overnight, 
that moved price away from the value or away from the prominent point of control and the poor low from the 10th. It looked to me like a realistic opportunity that was in my favor. All right, now what you'll see is the on the right of the 10th is the overnight trade from the 10th and going into the morning of the 11th. The green circle near the bottom represents the last electronic trade prior to the opening on the 11th. In this situation, the market is gapping lower. Gaps are one of the most interesting opportunities presented to us. When a market gaps lower, that's an indication that the market is out of balance. The biggest opportunities occur when markets are out of balance or open out of balance and return to balance. So when I look at this market gapping lower, I'm pretty sure that there is an opportunity on Tuesday morning. Now, when the market is going to gap lower, and before it hit the low of the overnight, but when it got, you know, well down below the low from the 10th, I cover my shorts. Now, I, I put the puts on from the previous night. I close them out in the morning. And the reason is it was a meaningful trade, and we were down into an area that is, a you know, it's a pretty important area. It's either go or no go from there. So I covered that trade. So I have no position on at that moment in time. So now the market is gapping lower on the opening. Now, with that in mind, it is important to always have an idea of what I see as the bigger picture or at a minimum, the next time frame. I want to show this two ways. First, I want to show it on a bar chart. Then I want to come back and I want to show it on the profile. Looking at my bar chart, the red line represents the previous all-time high going back to January of 2018. The market broke above that line. And then, as you can see, it began to trade lower. On Tuesday, you've seen the day in question. The market opened and traded overlapping to higher value on that day. The low of this trading range is at 28.65. That is my short term or maybe it's an intermediate term reference as the market has gapped lower and ready to open on the 11th. If there is to be any type of a real meaningful downside trade, we will have to trade below 28.65. Failure to trade below 28.65 greatly increases the odds that we will see a recovery from the gap overnight and a rally back into the range of the 10th. So now let's go back and let's look and see what that looks like on the market profile. I hope at this point you realize how much work needs to go into the preparation prior to starting a new day. Too many times traders don't do that preparatory work. They don't analyze the previous day. They don't look at the bar charts. They don't really have that clearly in their mind. When we come in and this day is opening, you already know that we have a major reference at 28.65. So unless the market can take out that 28.65 level, this market's going to rally. You know from my earlier comments that when I was coming into today, 
what I had written in the morning report was that I thought the odds of the market rallying were high because of the prominent point of control from the previous session. So the market is opening. We're praying at two times the regular speed. So we see that the market, the first thing it's done, it is traded down below the overnight low. A lot of traders do not trade overnight. So they're caught short or they're caught long, I'm sorry, when the market opens in the morning. So it can, there can be a lot of nervous trading going back and forth when the market opens as traders are forced to adjust positions. So sometimes you just want to have a little patience and let the market set up. Okay, so I'm here, I'm looking for the long position and I take the long position with calls someplace in here. Now, what would tell me that I'm wrong on this trade? If the trade goes down too close to the 2685 level without leaving me any excess low. Excess is one of the two most important concepts that we deal with in the market. If the excess isn't taken out at the 2865 level, then the odds are that this market's going to rally. So when you think about what is your risk reward here in the morning, the risk is relatively minor because you know you need to exit if we get down too close to the 2865. If we don't get out the 2865 level, there's a lot of room for this market to rally on the upside. So we're always thinking about risk and reward. How much reward for the risk that I'm taking? Or what is the potential uh, reward for the risk I'm taking? Too many times we don't do a good job of thinking in terms of odds. And that's really where we get the edge. Now, I must admit that this market made me very nervous in the morning because it went up a little bit, down a little bit, then it started to, you know, look below the overnight, look below the overnight low, started to, you know, get a little more aggressive. Then you see it come back, you'll see it come back in, go up towards the opening, which is the green dot. And you say, okay, well, maybe we're going to go here. And then the market sells off again. So it, it can leave you a little unsettled. And you can't be too nervous. You have to have some patience. You have to understand the importance of 2865. Too many traders will get too nervous as this market is going back and forth relative to the overnight low. And you see it's pushing down there fairly hard. Now, we haven't been back up through the opening price yet. We've got back up to the overnight low and then sold off. So that's a mechanical level it sold off from. Okay, so you can see now the market did not get the 2865 level. A little bit of rally going on. The reference is going to be, can we get back into the overnight range? If we get back into the overnight range, can we now get above the early morning high or just, which is just a tick above the opening. So we're playing this at two times regular speed. So it's, a little, it's happening a little bit faster than it was ha actually happening in the morning, but it still can make you very unsettled. Sometimes, now, I leaned into the trade because I had an opinion. I leaned into the trade. Some may want to wait and be a little later on the trade, which is nothing nothing wrong with that at all. I just happened to have had an opinion. I leveraged that opinion in, in order to get trade location. Many people would rather wait until the market shows its hand a little better. The problem with a lot of traders, it's once the market shows, it shows its hand, they mean they begin to think, oh, I missed the trade. So there's always trade-offs in there. Trading is a combination of self-understanding and market understanding. Self-understanding is more difficult than market understanding. I can teach market understanding. It's very difficult to teach self-understanding. Okay, so the market has come back through the opening price and through the early morning high, rallied. And you see at this point, we didn't get any upside follow through. Again, this market 
you can get that feeling there's a lot of nervousness early in the morning. We've seen the market open, trade a little lower, bounce a little bit, trade a little lower, come back up now, take out the opening and the early morning high, sell off a little bit. So there's nothing, there's nothing that's going to be comfortable for you in here. These are difficult times. You have to be comfortable the best you can. You have to keep your mind and your eyes focused on the 2865 level, knowing that that is the level. If we don't get through that level, then the market's going higher. A lot of times what will happen, the market will rally, and as soon as it starts to trade back towards the 2865 again, traders will get nervous, and they'll be long, they'll jump out of the trade, then they'll get short, and you know, then they get caught short. A lot of money is lost in this first few minutes as traders don't have the perspective I'm talking about that the overnight inventory was short, and we know that there's a very high percentage that short overnight inventory uh, will see a counter auction. A counter auction to short overnight inventory would be a rally. We we know that 2865, unless we get down through that level, the buyers are going to come in pretty aggressively on this market. So you can see the market is still trading back and forth. It's not giving you any real sense of security. And I know because I had a position on and I found myself, I found myself getting nervous. And even though I know what I'm looking at, it's almost impossible not to have your system get, get geared up. And when it gets geared up, the potential to make an error is pretty big. All right. So we're back up to the opening price, which is the green dot. Market is attempting to rally once again. We've been back and forth through the overnight low. Again, like I say, we didn't pro we didn't promise you any you know any uh, serenity in here. Okay, one more time, the market is trying to rally. So sometime at this point. You may start to think, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly comfortable. We're going higher. But look at the, the color scheme, the color scheme on the profile. The red is the heaviest volume, pink is next, and white is the lighter volume. So you see on the downside, the volume, it was white. Now on the upside, the volume is white. So what that tells you, that we're not getting a lot of um, new buying in coming in here. We're getting some short covering. We're getting some people just nibbling at it, but we're not seeing the heavy volume. And without seeing the heavy volume, and the chances are the market's going to drift off again a little bit. But you see here, it's, it's light, light volume on the high, light volume on the low. So we're right back at the opening price. Jen, how long are we into the day at this point? 14 minutes. Okay, so we're just, a, we're halfway through the first half hour. So the first 15 minutes in here, the market has been back and forth, giving you no real sense of security. But understand this, there is a lot of inventory that is short from overnight trade, from the market gapping lower, and additional selling that took the market down below the overnight low once the market opened. So there's a lot of shorts in here. Unless that market gets to 28.65 or below, the chances of the shorts making any real money is pretty slim. Now, you've got a gap. The rules for trading a gap are go with any gap that isn't filled fairly quickly. Now, of course, the question is, what is fairly quickly? And I can't answer that exactly. But I'm watching very closely now to see if this market can fill the gap. I don't like the confidence this morning. We've been back and forth through the overnight low too many times. So it's not the highest level of confidence you could see in the market. We're still not seeing 
any really heavy volume as the market rallies. Okay, now we're starting to pick up a little, we're starting to pick up a little momentum on the upside. Still looking for volume. So at this, at this point, think of what is going on inside the mind of those traders that were short overnight. Feel, feel the pressure that they are under. Understand that a lot of traders that are short don't cover right away. They hang on, they hang on, and as I tell people, prayer is not a strategy. But I can promise that from experience, there's a lot of shorts in here that are very, very nervous. The higher this market goes, the more uncomfortable those shorts are. Two things happen here. As this market goes higher, the shorts become very nervous. The other thing that is very common and very easy to forget about, the most common trading strategy is momentum trading. And that's price momentum trading. It's the most common because it's the easiest. When the momentum starts from the short covering, so that's short covering. If you're short, you have to buy to cover. The momentum from the short covering will very often bring in the momentum buyers. And once the momentum buyers come in, now you've got the shorts and they're being squeezed even more by the momentum players entering the market. Now the market is getting closer and closer to filling the gap. When you get to the gap or very close to the gap, it is likely that the market will slow down. And one of the reasons for that, it is such a visual reference. Traders use visual references. They can see them, they can almost touch them. So as we're rallying here, we haven't filled the gap. We haven't gotten any, you know, great uh, increase in volume. So it is really, it is really not the easiest uh, decision to make in here. And we're looking how many, how uh, how long has the period been underway, Jim? Well, we have nine minutes left in the period. Okay, so we've been about two thirds uh, through the first half hour. The market's pressured, pressuring the shorts to the upside. There's been no panic yet. There's been no panic yet. But get inside the head. Think what they're feeling. Think what they're feeling. They're shorts. So remember, they were short overnight. And then once the market opened, the market traded off back down towards the 2865 level. So that added some new shorts to the market. And now, as prices go higher, those shorts are getting squeezed. And remember, more than likely, you also have had the momentum players start to come on. So now we've got a lot of single prints. Single prints are a form of excess. When I look at the number of single prints here, it makes me uncomfortable. It feels to me like there may be too many single prints relative to the lack of confidence that we are showing in here. Okay, can you stop it for just a second while I talk a little bit, Jen? Okay, now we're going to talk about confessions of a stock trader. Or con I'm sorry, confessions of a futures trader. I had the long trade on, which I've already told you about. I took that long position through the call of buying of calls. If you remember early this morning, the market didn't show high confidence. It was back and forth several times relative to the overnight low. It didn't get to 28.65, but even on the way up here, the volume hasn't been terribly uh, terribly high. And I just made the comment that 
it looks like too many single prints, but meaning the market's gone too high the way I'm looking without having heavier volume. So someplace near the high that we just saw the market uh, trade, I exited my long trade. As you're going to see as the day goes on, that was not a good decision. I think it's only fair if we're going to go through these exercises to not only advertise the good trades, but also advertise the trades that weren't as good. And as you're going to see before this day is over, um, I missed a really big opportunity. And those are the things that happen. Okay, Jen, let's start it up again. We are still focusing on the, um, the gap, which would be filled by trading at the back through the low from the 11th. So as the market continues um, to move higher, we're still not seeing that increase in volume. And I'm still looking at a tremendous number of single prints. And single prints are usually an indication of just too much emotion. Now, if I had the single prints and I had heavy volume, I'd be far more comfortable. But I'm not seeing that at this point. All right. So the market continues, continues to trade up. As I said, if there's going to be a problem, it's going to be as it nears um, the low from the 10th. Remember, it's very visible, very easy to see. And if traders are going to come in and, and sell, that's where they're going to be. At least the first time. But notice, I, I, I think there's too many single prints. But the market isn't doing a lot of give back. And that's one of the other things we're looking for. If there really were sellers up there, you'd think you'd see the market give it back a little more quickly than it is. Remember, there's two things. There's people that are already long taking profits, but then there's new money selling coming in. So when you come down a little bit, that can be people taking profits. If you had people taking profits and new money tr selling coming in, you'd see the market sell off more aggressively. Okay, as we near the end of the first half hour, the market continues to march higher. We continue to have those single prints. And we have no real meaningful give back, but no real volume yet either. But remember, at this time, I said what we're dealing with are the shorts that are covering and also the momentum traders that more than likely have jumped on board. So that's probably what's full, uh, fueling this market. Momentum traders, it's fresh money, and the short covering. Okay, the gap is filled. The gap is filled exactly. So we no longer, we no longer are talking about a gap. Once the gap is filled, the next thing we focus on is developing value. If there's anything meaningful today, which is the 11th, then value at a minimum will be overlapping by the end of the session. The high of the value area uh, from the previous session was right around 28.83. Notice that is also a very prominent point of control from overnight. The more prominent a point of control is from overnight, the higher the odds that the market will go back and revisit that point of control. And the reason is that the market traded there a long time. There was a lot of acceptance of that being a fair price. Now, this market, you know, a lot of that was uh, set up as the market was trading um, in Asia. As the overnight market began to trade in Europe, uh, then the market got a little softer. So it's not uncommon to have... You know, the U.S. market, the Asian market, the European market. Sometimes they're all in sync. Sometimes they're substantially different. Okay, the gap is filled. How much time do we have left on the first period? Less than a minute. Okay, so we're going to change time periods very quickly here. Now, 
when we change time periods, what we're going to be looking at to see, do we have a good high? We know the gap has been filled, but are we going to have, are we going to have single prints on the high? Okay. So right now we've extended for in B period. So we're further into the previous day's uh, range. We do not have a good, we do not have a good high, meaning we don't have single prints. It takes at least two prints or single prints, B period prints, but in this case by themselves, to be considered an acceptable high. One high is called a poor high because there is no excess. A lot of traders, when you have that poor high, will now buy on the first pullback because the high is poor. And I thought about it and for some reason I didn't do it because I wasn't comfortable with the volume early on. That's going to turn out to be a wrong trade. Many times when we do the wrong trade or we don't do a trade we should have done, the market will give you an opportunity to get back on board. The market gave me that opportunity and I didn't take it. All right. So now the market continues to to trade higher, as we said, that high was poor. It was unlikely that that would be a lasting high. And you see the market's come right back to it. Hasn't gone through it yet, but it's come right back down to it, up to it. It still hasn't given us any real uh, confidence up there. It's trading off again a couple of ticks, and that B period high remains as the market sells off one more time. So as I'm watching this market, I'm not convinced, I'm not convinced that the real underlying strength is there in the market. What, and I'll share it with you now, what I didn't assess correctly was how short the market really was and how much additional fuel was added by the momentum players. And that's a miscalculation we can make from time to time. And my point is, if you don't like a trade, then don't don't get in that trade. You'll be too nervous. So I didn't like this trade, so I didn't get involved in the trade. One of the things that I have been blessed with over the past few years is the ability to give up and let go of a trade when I'm not in a trade. I, I used to get upset, you know, I might even cuss. Uh, but now if I miss a trade, I miss the trade. And I just, I just let it go at that. And it's just, that's a real plus because you don't do additional damage to yourself. All right, we now have a good high and it's a good high because we have some single prints. That doesn't mean it's the end of it. But you see now we're extending higher. All right. The next logical target on the upside is 2880.50, which was the prominent point of control from the 10th. The more prominent a point of control is, the greater the odds that the market will go back to revisit that point of control. This market is still very sluggish. We're early in, we're in the, only in the second half hour. We have a lot of single prints on the low. Those single prints represent excess. I thought there was too much excess relative to the volume and the momentum or tempo in which the market was trading. All right, let's do this, Jen. Jen. Let's speed it up. We're at two times now. Let's go to about five times. Um, and see what this market looks like. We'll just let the day play out a little bit here. So I understand now we're, we're five times the normal, the normal speed. One of the great learning tools, and you know, if you have, we use Window Trader, or if you have some system that allows you to replay days, it can be very educational. And you will find that when we go through the intensive, uh, we will replay days from time to time, you know, using the slower speed to show you how these days 
materialized. Um, twice a week, Jen and RJ do a synopsis where they condense the, the day to about 20 minutes, but you get to see the highlights and the comments that I made on the chat comment. You'll see where those are made. Um, it's very, very educational. And the last intensive, it was identified as the most beneficial uh, addition we had made to any of our uh, recent educational programs. All right, as we're in the second half hour, you see the market still heading for the prominent point of control at the 2080, uh, 2880.50 level. It's not there yet, but when you look at the market and you look at that there, it advertises that's where the market wants to go. Now, we are in the value area for the previous session. The previous session on the 10th, the darker blue or the blue shaded area is the value area. When you look at the day we're currently trading, September 11th, you see the shaded blue area is where today's value area is developing so far. Now, there's a long time left in the day, but so far we are, you know, we have entered uh, the value area from the 10th. The market is still moving towards that prominent point of control. Above the prominent point of control, you would see the top of the value area at the uh, 2883.50 level. So that would be another, and that's also, as we said earlier, that it's also the very prominent point of control from overnight. So that's another very visual reference that you'll be looking at. Okay, the market is continuing to, to push higher. It still appeared to me that the market was very stretched out. Too many single prints, and now you're getting quite a few B single prints above uh, the A period high. The single prints very often are an indication of short covering. Think about how you feel if you get caught short in the market. When you get caught in a short in the market, you're very panically, and it's just, just you know, cover at any price, cover, cover, cover. It's a very emotional type of thing that takes place. So it can, it can get stretched out quite a bit. Okay, we have traded to within one tick of the prominent point of control. Very visual uh, reference level. Not uncommon for the market to get attracted to that. And there, there are traders that are very much aware of that level. And they may also become sellers there. All right. How long are we into the second period? We are 18 minutes in. Okay, so we're only halfway through the second period. Let's speed it up just a little bit more. You want it at 10 speed? Sure. Okay. Okay, so now we're, you know, we're pretty good speed. We're 10, 10 speed at this point in time. One of my favorite trades, which I almost hate to bring up since I confessed already to missing the majority of the day, uh, when a market re-enters a previous day's trading range. When it re-enters the previous day's trading range, that opens up the potential to go to the opposite end of the range. And it happens more often than you might think. And the reason for it is the market was out of balance. And we said earlier, the best opportunities come along when a market is out of balance for one or two reasons. When it's out of balance and it continues out of balance, that is usually a very good trade. Or if it opens out of balance and comes back into balance, that is also a usually a very good trade because the market has the potential to go to the opposite extreme. Okay, so the market is back up through that very prominent point of control. Remember. It's something you'll hear time and time again. The more prominent a point of control is, the greater the odds that the market will trade back to that level. One more time, you saw it get there. 
a lot of times it doesn't feel like it could happen. It is amazing how often it does occur. All right, now that we're through that level, now we change time periods. And again, I'm watching this and it seems to me, this is what was still going through my head this morning, that the market was still an awful lot of single prints, meaning it was very stretched out. When you take the single prints from the low up to the words double prints with A, B, and then the single prints above the B level. So I'm watching this and I'm expecting the market to pull back somewhat. It just feels to me like it's very much overdone. So I'm participating the market will pull back in the morning. And as you see in the C period, it is starting to pull back. The reference levels on these pullbacks will be the A period high as well as yesterday's low or the low from the 10th at the 2876.50 level. Those are, again, very visual, very common references that markets will go to. So again, we still have the lower distribution, single prints, and then we have the second distribution. So we still have two distributions already set up in this day. Again, you may not have enough experience with us to understand when we say how stretched out a market is, but that market does feel to be very stretched out. Very stretched out markets happen very often because inventory is short, and then that short inventory is joined by, you know, is fueled more by momentum traders. The same thing could happen if a market was too long. All right, so I'm watching this market in the morning. I'm watching it pull back, and I'm trying to make my mind up if I'm going to do something on the pullback. I was expecting the pullback, and you see the pullback taking place right now. One of the levels I'm looking at is the A, B high. And you see how close we're getting to it. And I'm also looking at the low from the previous day. So the pullback in C period didn't quite go to the A period high. It went there, reason it bounced from there, it's a very visual level. The A period high is easy for every trader, short-term trader to see. So you see the market bounced from there once. Now they're coming back down to test it again. And just get this idea of how the market gets attracted to these levels. Okay, there we are. We have traded there. Now the market trades exactly to the low from the 10th. At that point in time, I'm looking and I'm saying that is a weak pullback low because it is exactly at the low from the 10th. So at this point in time, when it makes that C period low, um, I have made up my mind that I'm not going to participate on the long side. And the reason, to me, that's a weak low. And it's a weak low because it's exactly at the previous low. What I didn't take into account we talked earlier about momentum traders. Momentum traders have a strong tendency when the market is rallying to buy on levels to exact pullbacks. If the market is breaking, they have a tendency to sell at rallies to exact levels. So this market has, has come back down exactly to the low from the 10th, and you can see it's not going any lower. And what I've done at this point in time, I have it in my mind, it's a weak low, I decide not to participate. Which is, if, you know, that's decisions we always make, whether we want to participate or don't want to participate. I'm overworking this a little bit, um, but I, I just, I, I'm oversharing with you to understand that 
trading can be very difficult. I came into the day and I've had a couple good trades. I was long early on, so I put some good things together. And sometimes um, you're not going to get them all right. Okay, so the market is rallying again. And remember now something else in here. We are one time framing higher. One time framing means that the B period low did not take out the low from A period. C period low did not take out the low from B period. D period has not taken out the low from C period. And now you don't have a good high again. Okay, at this point, the next upside reference is going to be that very prominent point of control from overnight. And we said there's high percentage that once you get near it, you're going to go back to it. Above that reference will be the overnight high at 28.85 even. Above that reference will be Monday's high at 28.88.25. Jen, if you can pull your screen down a little bit, I want to show the the other um, mechanical high up here. And it's the high from 9.6. Notice the high from 9.6. You see an AB high up there. There was no excess on that high. The market has a strong chance of returning back to those non-excess highs when they get within striking distance. All right, remember, we're playing this at 10 times speed. The market is continuing to one time frame higher. The next upside, upside reference is the very prominent point of control from overnight, followed by the overnight high, followed by the high from the, um, from the 10th. Now, what you are likely to see as a market like today, trades higher and higher instead of slowing down you are very likely to see the market make some very sudden spurts to the upside when you see that happen that is usually an indication that the last of the shorts are covering we talk a lot about the dispersion model. Dispersion model starts with your innovator. So if we're talking about buying this morning, the early buyer would be the innovator. That'd be followed by the early adopter, followed by early majority, late majority, and finally the laggards. When you see, if that happens, you see this really final run or almost final run to the upside. It happens very fast and over a broad range. That is usually the sign that the late majority and the laggards are in the market. And once they're in the market, that very often, you know, ends the real opportunity for the session. It's hard to when the market's going up like this it's hard to imagine that you can get one of those really fast runs to the upside but understand it's because of the human nature element the think of the traders that are short they're hanging on praying and i said praying is not a strategy they are sitting and playing that the market will go back down and they'll be okay they hang on to the very end. Now, some cover it early, but you always have a substantial number that are laggards and they hang on and hang on and hang on till they can't stand it anymore. Now, the momentum traders, they're buying all day long. Momentum traders have a tendency to add to their positions. A lot of us don't trade that way. A lot of us, you know, if we have a pretty good sized position, we may have a tendency to cut it back, take a little risk off the table. Momentum traders have a tendency to add to their position. So a lot of times when momentum trading is underway, the market can move very quickly. 
just because the nature of what momentum traders do. All right, so we've just made the very prominent point of control of overnight. We said the next upside reference is the overnight high. And see how, notice how we hesitate at those references because they're very visual and very easy to see. One of the reasons I said earlier on, I like when a market re-enters a previous day's range because it increases the odds that we can get the outside day. An outside day would be when the market traded below the low of the 10th and then goes up and traded, uh, trades above the high for the 10th. It's an outside day and it's a, it's a technical trader's uh, dream. We dream what happened doesn't happen that often, but if it's gonna happen, you're gonna have to re-enter the market, the range for that day after being outside of it. Okay, now notice once again, as the market got near the overnight high, a very visual reference, the market slowed down. The chances are that once the market goes through the overnight high, that the most traders will throw up their throw in their their, their their hand if they're still short. They said, Oh my God, the last thing we got through the overnight high. Um, there's no hope for me. So we'll see if that happens, but a lot of times you'll you'll see that. But the overnight high is clearly an upside reference. As this market started to move higher, you know, we had uh, we had yesterday's low as a reference. We had the prominent point of control. One of them we didn't talk about was unchanged. Uh, the next one is going to be, you know, the overnight very prominent point of control, the overnight high. Then you're going to get the high from the previous day. And you can look at these references and you can have a pretty clear picture. And that will help you judge somewhat how the day is proceeding. Okay, so we're right exactly at the overnight high. Notice the exactness at which it stops there. Markets are very visual. Now, when markets stop exactly at those visual references, that gives me information. And that tells me that more than likely, the buying that goes on is very mechanical and is by weaker hands traders. If the longer time frames that buy and hold were in there, they have no idea where the overnight high is, nor do they care. When you see the market, you know, work these references so perfectly, gives you a pretty good idea that we are dealing with day time frame traders. And we already know that this market's very stretched out. And I can tell you from looking at the volume throughout the day that the volume doesn't justify the range for the day. So again, that helps me, well, it helps keep me out of that trade earlier, but it also suggests to me that once the short covering and then the momentum players that have jumped on board, once that is over with, the odds are that the market uh, will start to move sideways. All right, we're through the overnight high. Remember what I said, once we get through that level, there's a tendency for people to throw in the towel, say, oh my golly, it's too late for my short. I just got to get out of this trade. So now they go up very quickly, took out the high from the 10th. I put out a chat comment someplace along here. It said the next upside reference is the 28.93. Poor high from uh, 9.6. So you see see the number, the how wide the e, the e period uh, is, the number of single prints in the E period. That was just the shorts throwing in the towel. And it's hard, as you're trading, it's hard to believe that's going to happen. The only way that it's understandable, if you get inside the head of the people you are trading against, and you understand how these shorts act, they hang on, they hang on, and finally they throw in the towel and they just say, get me out at any price. Matter of fact, one of the groups that I have mentored the greatest over the years was the trading floor of the New York Merck with the oil traders. 
as that trade, if that floor was going from floor based trading to electronic trading, um, I worked a lot with with those folks. And you know, a lot of times they have tablets that that one all they have to do is hit the button on it, and the button says flatten my position. I mean, that's like an alarm button. It just says get me out. So they hit that button and their position gets flattened all the way around. If they were short, they hit that button. That's the same kind of covering you see right here. And that happens to short-term floor traders too. All right. So the market has rallied uh, back up through yesterday's high. We do have the outside day now. And now the market is heading for the high at 28.93 from the sixth. So, so far, this hasn't been a terribly difficult day to understand. If you're trading the day, it may be very frustrating because you may have missed some trades and <clears throat> sometimes you may have shorted this. One of the things you never, never want to do is short a trend day. If you insist on shorting a trend day, short it very late, not early. One of the biggest mistakes that traders make is fading or going against a trend day. I'll repeat it over and over again. One of the biggest, if not the biggest mistake that short-term traders make is going against or fading a trend day. And then once they fade the trend day and take a loss, now they get angry and they fade it two or three more times. These are the kind of days that wipe out your account. All right, the market has gone up and it has stopped exactly at the high that we had labeled earlier as being a poor high because there was no excess. We're gonna open this wide up and play out the rest of the day. Put what speed on, do you want it? Put it on full speed. We're going to see something very unusual here. And that is that the market is going to trade for the remainder of the day without taking out that early morning F period high, without trading through the high from 9.6. That is an extremely unusual occurrence. When something like that happens, it is usually because the market has gotten too long. <clears throat> In other words, early this morning, the market got too short. They got short from overnight. There was some shorting immediately following the opening. And maybe there was even some shorting on every little rally. The market got too short. When a market gets, gets too short, you see you get what you got today and you get the short covering. When a market gets too long, we can end up with a poor high. It's unusual, but it happens. And the reason it happens is too Many short-term traders have gotten too long and too nervous. And every time a market goes back up towards that very visual level, they sell. A lot of times we say a market has to break before it can rally. When we say that, it's usually an indication that the market has gotten too long. Every time the market rallies, weaker traders are taking profits. So in order for the market to go higher, you need to break. You need to scare those weaker traders out, replace them with stronger hand traders, so the market can then trade back up through the original high that it couldn't trade through earlier. So now we're playing this at 30 times speed. And what you're going to see for the rest of this session is the market does not take out that early morning high in F period that matches the high from 
you'll see the market trade there. But over the next, I think it's, you know, about three hours, all the market does is stay in this very narrow range. If you had had new money buying, joining the short covering, now we call short covering old business. When new money comes in, we call that new business. The strongest rallies are a combination of old business and new business. The strongest breaks are a combination of long liquidation and new money selling. If we had new money joining the short covering on the 11th, the market wouldn't have any problem taking out the high from 9.6. So this market traded back and forth for a very narrow range for the remainder of the session. Very unusual. Uh, rarely did I see a day like this. But while we're watching a day like this, the entire day is unusual. Many of you may know that originally my educational programs were taught in a linear manner uh, from workbooks. I was never satisfied with that because it was very difficult for traders to really put it together in the real market and see how it all interfaced together. I then went to the point of doing live trading on a stage at a hotel or conference center. And those would be four to five days. Now, over four to five days with live markets can expose people to a lot more. But still, you can only show so much in four to five days. Some days, sometimes you get a week, nothing really changes. I was unsatisfied with that. My previous partner suggested that we do the intensives. And the intensives are, you know, so you know they're four to five weeks in duration for session one. And we have a second session that is also four to five weeks in duration. The goal is to let you see as many real days where we can mentor and narrate the trading so you get a broader range of experience. You're not going to, you're, you're really even in two full intensities, you're not going to get all the experience there is because every day is different. The day we're looking at right now is different than any day I think I've ever seen. I've seen some similar days, but this, this day is really different. So it's not a day that comes along very often. Once you've seen a day like this, you've added another level of expertise to your experience. It's just like if you're playing tennis. You know, first you got to learn to play a left-handed player. You got to, you know, learn to play a right-handed player. You know, one player is good with the lob, another players, you know, not good with a lot. Everything's slightly different. The temperature's different. The court's different. The surface is different. And it takes constant building that experience in order to compete. All right. So the market, um, you can see it's, it's back into the range from the 10th. Market quit one time framing higher. It didn't want it didn't quit one time framing higher till I period. It has to take out the previous uh, low by two ticks. G took out F by one, H took out G by one, and it wasn't until I period that I period took out H by two ticks. So the market officially stopped one time framing. So the market continued this way for the remainder of the afternoon. Very, very strange day. The volume on this day was higher than it was on the 10th. However, the market volume is far lower than you would anticipate on a day of the range that this day had. So it is not a day that has high odds of upside continuation. All right. 
we don't need to see the rest of the day play out because it doesn't go anyplace. But let's stop at this point, and hopefully you will find that there is a tremendous amount to be learned from this day. To recap those, first, the importance of doing preparation before the day is underway. Starting when the market closed on the previous day, that you start re-examining the day that just ended. Looking at the logical reference points. Thinking about value. Thinking about where would significant reference be. Then we watch what happens in the overnight trade. In this case, we saw that overnight trade was very short and we saw the market was going to gap lower. Once the market's going to gap lower, then you say, okay, either we have a pretty aggressive day to the downside as the market has, you know, is out of balance to the downside, or we end up with a pretty aggressive day to the upside. Doesn't have to happen, but too many times it does. As you see, this day was a strong day to the upside. Strong in the in the price movement, not strong in the structure, not strong in the volume, but strong in the price movement. Also, we went back to look at the bar charts, and we saw that the trading range low was not too far away from where we opened this morning. So that trading range low was a significant reference. If that trading range low isn't taken out, the odds are that we're going to get a pretty good rally. But you had to know what where that reference was before the day gets started. Too many times, traders play lip service to preparation. They think they're going to wing it, and then they get caught and really have a difficult time with the day. So the preparation, understanding overnight trade, understanding the characteristics of the people you are competing against, extremely important. All right, let's end this day, and we'll join you for another day before long.